Hello everyone, today we are going to be starting a new shade garden and it's going to be in the area behind me where that wheelbarrow is and I have three perennials that I'm using and I'm going to take you there and show you the different types of perennials that I'm using for the shade garden. So I dug up these shade perennials over here earlier today and I had them sitting here for a while and I also have these over here that I started from seed in the winter sowing method. The ones in the small pots that are sitting in these big containers are started in a different winter sowing method than the ones that are in the large containers. Start with this one. So these ferns are actually a native fern that grows in our area. I'm not sure if this is the Boston fern or what it is. Maybe if you guys know it, you can let me know what it is in the comment section down below. And also, there's another smaller one right here. And down below uh, is some just purple columbine that I got from, I think Dollar Tree or Big Lots, I don't remember. <laughs> and they were just bare roots. I had them planted under the spruce tree before we had to cut that down. And a lot of the stuff that are in here got mowed over <laughs> by my husband because he didn't realize I had plants there. It's not his fault. I just let weeds grow in there because I knew I was going to get to these and we kind of let weeds grow in our lawn because we have bees and we have animals and we just want our animals to graze and to get all sorts of different protein and all that from the different types of grass they graze on and also because we want our bees to be able to have flowers in the lawn we let it grow every now and then so that they can have flowers and get nectar from anyways so they got mowed and also the deer ate my hosta and then my husband mowed them over <laughs> oh well it's all right not a big deal i've had the deer eat my hostas several years in a row and they would always come back actually the deer ate almost all my hostas under the blue cedar and there's only like a couple left and i'm sure they're gonna come to them and that's because i wasn't able to get to those early enough to spray them i was just too busy so it's a struggle anyways so let me show you the rest of the stuff that i have in here this one right here got several things happen to it this hosta got hit by the frost earlier this season and then the deer ate it and then it got mowed um, this is supposed to be a blue hosta. I don't know its name because when I bought it, I did not have a name. And one of these hostas, I think this one right here, is the ghost fern. Ghost hosta? Ghost fern? I forgot its name. Ghost fern? If I find its name again, I'll put it up on the screen. And another hosta I had in there, but I'm not sure if I dug it up because it might have just disappeared in there. It was just a... A hosta that I found on our land when we moved in it had some yellow margins and on the outer sides of the leaves and it had some green on the inner sides and then in the middle it was white I don't know the name of that hosta um, again if you guys know what I'm talking about please leave it in the comment section down below if not I'll just look it up and maybe I'll find <laughs> I'll find its name and then over here I have a different different sizes of this columbine even though all these were winter sowed exactly at the same time. Some of them just barely starting, some of them are just growing up a little bit and this one looks like it's doing really good. So I fertilized these maybe a couple times and the same with these. This I have only one that sprouted and this one I think I have a couple that sprouted but someone or something, not someone, is eating the leaves off of the little baby one that's right here. And I think this one sprouted a little later than this one right here. So I think once these get planted in here, then they will put on a lot more growth much quicker. And I don't know if I mentioned, this is right here, the Leprechaun Gold Columbine. And I got the seeds from Baker Creek, uh, from rareseeds.com. And I will leave a link for all the websites where I bought the hostas or uh, well one of them <laughs> and where I got the seeds for these plants over here this um, this one right here is the clementine salmon rose columbine and I got the seeds for this one from outside pride same with this one over here and this is the oops uh oh <laughs> it's 
<laughs> All right, the William Guinness Columbine. So I have kind of a mishmash of Columbines in here and different hostas, but I think that's going to make it look more interesting. It's going to have uh, different types of colors in here because some Columbines are blue, some of them are pink, some of them may be on the yellow side, I don't know, and the and the leprechaun gold columbine also adds this brightness with its variegated leaves and it, I, I think it's going to look beautiful i think so and if i don't like their placement then i can always move them but let me turn the camera around and show you this area i it was a oh you guys can't see anything okay <laughs> This area right here was completely wooded and it took me a couple years to clear it up and I see now some weeds starting to sprout so I'll just take the hula ho and go over that. But if we turn around this way you'll see all this also is a whole lot of wooded areas. Lots of them. So I'm going to start in this area and I'm going to be slowly over the years clearing up all these areas and creating new flower beds but in the meantime I have this empty spot right here and I can create a new flower bed in here now this area right next to it I also cleared it last year but this area gets sun and it gets sun it gets sun pretty much the whole day and it gets dappled shade but enough to grow plants that love the sun this I think is jewelweed and you can see if you look over there you'll notice that it has a lot less plants than over here even though I cleared them both last year and both of them were completely empty now I did have a white lilac in here but last year, or this year I think, this spring, the deer came and ate it, so I found it. <laughs> it's right here. And these, you know, not everything is ugly in here. I suppose I could leave them in here and I could let them flower, but there are also weeds in here. There's also a plant that I'm super allergic to and I totally forgot its name. Not goldenrod, the other one that looks like it. I'm allergic to both, but I... <laughs> uh, this one is the one that looks like goldenrod and they are they both give me terrible allergies. So whenever I see them, <laughs> I kill them. I don't allow them in my garden even though they're great for the bees and the butterflies, but I can't breathe, honestly, when I go outside. There's a whole lot of weeds, stinging nettles, and poison ivy. <laughs> so all this is going to be cleared up again. I'll just take my hula ho and go over it, and then I will put down some cardboard and mulch and call it good. <laughs> but I'm not going to work on this today. That's for another day. Anyways, in here... That's what we have to do today before we can plant any of this stuff. So I'm going to take the hula hoe, which is this tool right here, and clear up this area, or at least the shady area, because I don't have a lot of time today. And then we're gonna we're going to plant. And then if I have any time left over today, then I'll come back and then I'll put down some cardboard and mulch. Hopefully I'll have some time. It is dinner time right now. I don't know how hungry I will be by the end of planting this stuff because I'm feeling hungry right now. <laughs> and if I go inside, I probably won't be able to come outside again. So let's go ahead and get this area cleared up and start planting. Oh, I almost forgot. I also use this brush killer because I have here some sumac and some wild thorn bushes that are growing in here that I want to kill before they take over because they're super invasive. And some tree that just kind of spreads itself everywhere on our, on our property. I don't want it in there. I just, the trees that are there, I'm leaving. But if it's a sumac tree or anything like that, I will be eventually taking it down. And if any sprouts from those trees, I'm going to be killing them with this right here. This will take care of it. I'll just, oh, I forgot. I need my loppers. 
and my pruners. When, it's good, when it gets time to use this, I'll show you how I use it. I do want to say one thing that right now you are seeing sun on this area, but right now it is six in the evening. So this doesn't get sun until super late in the day and this sun normally isn't super hot. It's a little warm right now, but it's not going to cook any of the plants that are here. And most of these plants can tolerate a little bit of sun if it's not super scorching sun. So let's go ahead. I'm going to grab my gloves and my hula hoe and we're going to get started. So we have some poison ivy over here and this tree that's regrowing, oh, it looks like, oh, is that poison ivy or I don't know what that is, it looks like poison ivy, I think it is. And this thorn bush right here and I think, yep, and a bittersweet vine right here. I'm not going to tackle this right now, I just need to be able to get a small area ready for planting. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to grab my gloves and my goggles and some pruners and then we are going to use the brush killer and I'm going to show you how I use it. So for the poison ivy I'm not going to use my pruners because it's so small and when you do cut the vine the vine is super thin in diameter that this doesn't seem to do that much to it so I like to apply it directly on the leaves preferably I would prefer to mix this at its strongest concentration with water and spray it on the poison ivy. I think that's the best way to tackle poison ivy, but I didn't do that today, so I'm just going to put a little bit of this brush killer over here on the poison ivy, and I'll put a link for the brush killer that I'm using. I found this to be the best brush killer ever. Nothing seems to come back. It's pretty efficient, and we have a lot of super invasive stuff in here, so I need to use something to kill those invasive things <laughs> without killing myself in the process. Okay, so when I'm doing something like this, usually I, if I just want to use a concentrate, if I'm using my pruners and I'm cutting down some shrubs and I just want to put a little dab on the area where I cut to kill that shrub, I normally put it in my pump sprayer so that I could just directly spray it on the fresh cut. You could also use a a paintbrush. I need to do that myself. If I had that, that would be the perfect uh, way to apply this on the poison ivy. But I don't have that right now, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a stick, dab it in here, and try to dribble it onto the poison ivy leaves. Now for this shrub, I'm just going to take my loppers and lop it right at the base and pour the solution directly on the fresh cut.
So this is where all the plants ended up and we got the ghost fern hosta, a blue hosta, I don't know, a yellow, green and white hosta and the native ferns in here, two of them. And behind them I have a couple columbines. I don't even know what their name is because when I got them I don't think they no I hmm. I believe these are actually the same kind as the one that I planted in front of them which is which is the one I started from seed. This is the William Guinness Columbine because they do have the same leaf and they also bloom the same color which is the purple blooms. And right here we have the Clementine Salmon Rose Columbine right there and it worked out that some of these pots had two columbines in each of them so I ended up with five, five of the leprechaun gold columbine so we have one over here one over here there we go it's a little floppy but it'll bounce back pretty soon and then we have a couple right here so these I believe grow to a smaller size than the William Guinness Columbine and then the and then the Salmon Rose Columbine. So the Clementine Salmon Rose Columbine. That's why I put these in the front. And these hostas also grow to a small size, about maybe a foot high maximum. I don't think they even get that high. This one, however, I think this one grows pretty big, so I had it in the back. If the poison ivy wasn't poisonous and wasn't invasive, this actually, with the rest of the foliage that's over here, looks pretty nice. Unfortunately, it's poisonous and it's invasive. Oof, I'm a, I'm a mess. <laughs> I'm going to go grab some cardboard and some mulch and finish the job over here. So this is what it looks like right now. And I do still have the edges to mulch, but I'm not going to do it tonight because I'm losing light and I still didn't have dinner. It is 8.15. I need to go take a shower and have dinner. I won't be able to finish this tomorrow either because I have other things going on. I'll get to it eventually. Let me bring you closer so that you guys can see what the plants look like right now with the mulch being there. There we go. I think this is going to look very beautiful and I just wanted to create a small area so that I don't have to be weeding a huge area. I don't want to space the plants too far apart from each other because then all the other weeds that are here are going to start popping up through the mulch and all that and yes I do have cardboard and a newspaper and all that but some of the weeds do make it through. Um, the something gold columbine, I can't remember its name, uh, is a lot of them are so small you can barely see them but having this mulch over here is going to protect these plants and allow them to have some moisture because and it's going to protect the surface of the soil and the plants are going to uh, be able to retain moisture because these plants are not on irrigation over here maybe one day I'll bring ir irrigation in here but I think this area should be okay I may have to supplemental water them every now and then. I feel like though I'm creating a deer buffet in here because I have the hosta plants right there. Uh, we'll see. I'm thinking of getting more Brunnera for this area and my other shade areas because Brunnera is deer resistant and I think also Hookeras are also deer resistant. Uh, I'm not so sure about that but I think they are. So I'll be getting, or seed starting, uh, some of these in here. I do want to get the Jack Frost Brunnera though. I think that's very beautiful and it will shine in here with its silvery leaves. And this grass right here, I left it. I think this is a Carax type grass. Uh, but it is, uh, it does seed itself everywhere in here, but this area is shady, so I think it won't be seeding itself that much in here. We'll see how it does. I mean, you can see here the seed stock right there, so I think I'm going to take the seeds off so that it won't be able to seed itself. And if it does multiply here a little bit, that won't be a big deal. 
but I just don't want it to go that way where the sunny area is. <sighs> I'm a hot mess right now. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was inform informative in some sort of way. People are starting fireworks for 4th of July already. <laughs> uh, we are, what, July? No. June 31st. Today is June 31st. And it's pretty hot. So, anyways. What was I going to say? <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope it was informative. And if you are new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the bell to receive notifications of whenever I upload new videos. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and leave a comment down below. Tell me what is your most favorite shade perennial that you have in your garden right now. And before I forget, I'll be leaving a video for you right here. You can go ahead and click on that and watch it until next time. Bye.